Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. So today, in episode 5, we're going to do a deep dive into what is DeFi, and how does it compare to traditional market finance, and then CeFi, which is another term that many of us have heard, which stands for centralized finance. And now DeFi stands for decentralized finance. So what is decentralized finance? DeFi is the abbreviation for decentralized finance, which implies an assortment of financial applications that leverage blockchain networks and technologies. DeFi has introduced a formidable change in viewing the financial transactions beyond the existing assumptions of the prevailing closed market. And this is very important because this is our next evolution of crypto. Now that we could just buy it, hold it, speculate on it, but now we could actually utilize it in applications that are built on top of these crypto networks. So on top of the protocols, and we've all heard value is in the protocol. So all these applications or decentralized applications that are built on the blockchain networks that utilize similar financial services to traditional markets, except they're on the actual network. Now, how does that compare to, say, centralized finance? So, for example, like Nexo or BlockFi. Now, the difference with those is you're using their custodial wallet. And now on their custodial wallet, you'll be able to then interact with their application. So say there's a lending application where you could put in your XRP and then borrow against it. Now, you're not doing that on the actual blockchain. You're doing that on, say, Nexo or BlockFi's platform, which is still based on centralized platform that they control and you're handing your trust over to them. And now they use also a centralized oracle. Now, you're also insured through platforms like this. And there will be other, there's other applications they offer. So like money market accounts, you could put your XRP in there or stablecoin and earn interest on it. Now, the difference with DeFi applications, let's go over here to this diagram. So there are six specific attributes that decentralized finance has that's different from say CFI and traditional finance so one being it's permissionless two it's fully decentralized three it's trustless four it's fully transparent and five is a big one censorship resistant and then six programmable which is the smart contract capability now coming back over here to this i want to read through the second paragraph which is very important. So decentralized finance relies on three specific elements. Interoperability, programmability, which is that smart contract features, and then three, which not many of us are familiar with, but we're going to explain today, is ease of composing. So composability. Now these DeFi applications are like money Lego blocks, and they all fit in together. So one DeFi application might be a decentralized exchange that allows you to swap in and out. Now that works with a yield farming application that allows you to farm assets. Then there's another one that might be a lending application or a money market application. And now all of these are meant to work together and complement each other. And that's like the money Lego blocks. And all these are built on the actual underlying network. And now these are considered decentralized applications and they have these six attributes to them. Permissionless, decentralized, trustless, transparent, censorship resistant, and programmability. Now, especially with everything that's been going on in the traditional markets with your Robin Hoods going down, getting censored, not allowing people to buy, that's something that with decentralized finance there will never be an issue with there's nobody that could censor you or stop you from utilizing 
And one other thing that's important with decentralized finance, you're going to be able to access all these DeFi protocols and applications right from your wallet. So you'll have your Flare wallet once they come out, which is being built by Toho Labs, is building a browser-based wallet. Now that will have then a Flare Finance interface. So let's go over to Flare Finance now. And we're just going to do a little run through. So these Flare Finance is building decentralized applications on the Flare network. They are not associated with Flare Network Limited. They are a separate entity, but they are building on the Flare network. And that's important to know the difference. So we'll have its own micro ecosystem on top of Flare. And it will have its own tokens, which is YFlare, YFin, and YMin. We will get into the airdrops and details of Flare Finance in another video. But right now, I just want to go over a basic understanding of what Flare Finance is and the products that they're building on the Flare network so we could all utilize them in the future. So Flare Finance will deliver a handful of non-custodial decentralized financial infrastructure, including swaps, stable currency, yield farming, asset back loans, insurance, and yield mining for the first time to both XRP holders, Doge holders, Litecoin holders, and Spark holders. So all of the F assets that are brought over onto the Flare network are then going to be able to be utilized in many of these Flare Finance applications. So this document I will link in the description below, but it gives us a basic understanding of the products that will be available. So here, let's go to the different ones that will be available. So we have Flare X, which is going to be like your Uniswap, so a decentralized exchange. Then we have Flare Farm, where you'll be able to put in your assets, say it's FXRP, say it's Spark, say it's Stablecoin, into the Flare Farm and be able to then mine YFIN. Then you have Flare USD, which is a collateralized stablecoin of ERC20 stablecoins. So this is different from the stablecoin we talked about in the last video. This is a basket of current stablecoins that exist on Ethereum and then just wrapped and brought over. So then we have Flare Loans, which is going to be similar to, you know, your compound where you could put in assets and then you earn a percentage. They'll go over more details. We haven't found too much out about Flare Loans yet. And then Flare Mutual is an insurance based uh, smart contract capability that will new projects come into the ecosystem. You'll be able to put up money as insurance and then earn interest on that. And then we have Flare Mine, which is going to do with the miners on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum are able to utilize on the Flare Finance. So they'll be able to mine Bitcoin and then the system will automatically swap that to Flare to so Spark tokens. And then there'll be a whole uh, application built around that for miners, but it has nothing to do with proof of work coming over to Flare. Nothing like that. Um, oh, another important thing here is users can interact with all of these products in our ecosystem through their Flare wallets. They can earn passively by staking or providing liquidity for the exchange. Flare Finance increases the utility of Spark and Trustless XRP, which is FXRP, FDoge, FLTC. Combining the best of XRP, which is Fast Settlement, Ethereum Smart Contracts, and Avalanche's Consensus to create the natural evolution of DeFi. And us, as specifically XRP holders, have never had these capabilities. So Ethereum has been booming with their whole DeFi and has proved out the use case that these are very beneficial for holders. So now we just don't have to hodl these assets and hope they go up in capital appreciation. Now you're going to be able to benefit from all the native functions on the Flare network, like delegating your FTSO vote, and then you'll still be able to utilize that Spark token in Flare Finance if you choose to. And same goes for FXRP. So you'll still be earning daily rewards, and you could then utilize it in a Flare Finance DeFi application. So what it does is it opens up the flexibility for us 
as XRP holders. And I think this is a big shift and it's going to take a little time for us to process through our heads that, okay, it's not just HODL XRP on a nano ledger. We could actually utilize these assets. And what else is great here is the Tolo, Toho web browser wallet that's being built is going to be able to connect to your nano ledger. So you're going to still be able to use your, your safe cold storage hardware wallets, but then also connect to the Flare wallet and then utilize those in DeFi applications and in just the Flare network's basic integration function. So I hope this gives everyone like a broad overview of how powerful DeFi is gonna be. And this is just the beginning now with what Flare Finance is doing. And in the future, we're gonna see the integration of tokenization of assets and bringing that onto the Flare network and then really utilizing that in DeFi that's really going to be when we see this convergence of traditional markets because they there's no censorship. They're trustless. They're transparent, permissionless. And this really flips the whole system on its head. And maybe one day we'll see that with actually even trading security tokens and tokenized assets like Sologenic is doing and building on top of the XRP ledger. And also now with Flare in the mix, it's going to be very exciting what's built here. So the point I'm trying to get across is that this is all being built for the retail to be able to utilize for our FXRP, for our Spark airdrop. And it's something to look forward to. And we want to learn as much as we can about it before it goes live because other applications are going to come out and then we're going to have to learn about those. So also with Flare Finance, we're going to be covering that in a future video and a future live stream about the details of that airdrop with DFlare. I'm Mickey B. Fresh, and I'm out.